Flamingo, 12 o'clock rock here on a Thursday with ThinkTech. Aloha United, we stand. I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm delighted to present uh, Jim Kennedy. He's the executive director of Hawaii Fido Service Dogs, which is a nonprofit supported at least in part by Aloha United Way. And Larry Bigelow, who is a veteran and service dog owner. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you for including us. Great to have you here. So tell us a little bit about uh, you know what Hawaii Fido Service Dogs does as an organization, Jim. Well, we raise and train at no charge to our clients. Uh, service dogs that help people with disabilities other than blindness. Uh, there are so many different types of legitimate service dogs, and we focused on the those that have disabilities other than blindness. Uh, an example might be someone who has uh, some stability issues and need ba assistance balancing, getting into and out of a chair, in a car, out of bed. Uh, yeah, they, the dog should be trained any number of different things, retrieval, besides bracing, uh, return, fetching for medicines and what have you. Um, but anyway, we've been around since the year 2000. We were founded by Susan Lures, who was a special education teacher at uh, Kahuku, and she had an aha moment a few years before she retired, and that was when she was raising dogs, she would bring some in to her special ed class, and she noticed that people that weren't paying attention were starting to pay attention, mm -hmm. and she knew then, of course all her life she's been a dog person, but she knew that um, dogs can change a life and the direction of a life. So she decided she wanted to become a trainer of legitimate service dogs when she retired. And the Lions Club helped put her through some of that training. And in the year 2000, she started Hawaii Fido Service Dogs. So what's the depth and scope of the organization now? How many staff members do you have? We, and we, have, we have two people who are staff. And I'm a part-time executive director. Mm -hmm. And most of what I do is out of my love of what service dogs can do for people. And then Susan Lures, who is uh, the founder, but she is also our lead trainer. Mm -hmm. And we have about 30 individuals who assist us in puppy raising. And usually that's husband and wife couples or mother, daughter. And, and we have about 15 dogs that are in training at in, any given point in time. And so those 30 volunteers are really our organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also have three other trainers who donate their time and assist uh, Susan in, uh, in the actual training. Mm -hmm. The first year and a half that the dog is around, is born, first year and a half that dog is socialized, is trained behaviorally, uh, it learns how to behave in all kinds of environmental situations and different group situations. So in a year and a half, after a year and a half of life, it's, it's perfect in every way and it's ready to be trained then to provide services to somebody with disabilities. So what's the entry point? Do, do you, um, you know, wean the pup? Do you, yes. Do you train the pup and then you present the pup to the, the partner, the, the, uh, the service dog owner? Susan does all the, those, the, all the dogs that we have come to us free from Susan. Susan has been a dog She's breeder. A breeder. For, she's a breeder. In addition to being our lead well, trainer. And what kind of breeds are we talking well, about? Well, we, we have two types of dogs that we've focused on. Um, one of them is the Labrador. Um, and the other is a Labradoodle. It's part poodle, part Labrador. And uh, the benefit of the Labradoodle is, is that it's hyperallergenic. So if somebody has a slight, or in their family has the slightest allergy issues, um, that dog will not create a problem in that household. In that household. Uh, we've, across the country, uh, Labradors are by far uh, the most common dog. They have great smarts. Uh, they also have great flexibility. They, uh, if, if they come across something they haven't been trained to deal with, they don't panic, they deal with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Labradoodles are re very smart dogs too, and they do the same thing. Yeah. So those, we, we really feel good working with those two. Groups. So when, when the dog is trained, say 18 months, then, then you present the dog to a worthy um, owner. Well, actually, the, after, the first 18 months is behavioral and socialization. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to what I call boot camp. Okay, and that is when we, ha we are constantly getting applications for, from individuals who would like to have a service dog. And we assess it based on their needs and our ability to provide a dog that can provide tasks that will actually help them. And when we select that person and the dog's coming up and it looks like this is going to be a good pair, and that's about 18 months, 
what happens then is, is that individual starts training directly with the dog and one of our professional sure. trainers. Sure, they bond up that way. Yeah, and in those last six months, from 18 months to 24, or when the, the dog is that's when those dogs really learn to perform the tasks yeah. that are needed yeah. and then then they go and home. then they go then they go on with the, but the with training the never stops uh, the training oh, I never, want to know about that so yeah. that you you continue to update the training through the life of the dog as long as it as long as the the partners are here stay in Hawaii and don't move someplace else we yeah. absolutely do yeah. we're because in touch with need, you need to be retrained sometimes yeah, sometimes we need to you know you get back and say okay we need to teach the dog to calm down a little bit because they are dogs and they like to have fun yeah. uh, or maybe there's a new task that we need to have and yeah. we're always meeting with maybe the service annually. owner needs to be retrained too oh man that's true absolutely. now Larry we've done <laughs> absolutely. a absolutely Ron's very I've good I've learned a lot <laughs> to kibble well, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to have dogs I, I told you before for. I am so into dogs yeah. that I, I couldn't live without one. Yeah. So anyway, so <clears throat> uh, you have a short clip you want to play. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we um, what we did was uh, we've been trying to do a, a lot of kickoffs with Aloha United Way, and they did a video uh, that they used during that kickoff, and uh, one of our partner teams was involved in that video. And the Kinetic Productions, who did it for a law, United Way, says, we want to do a PSA for you. Good. So this is a 30-second PSA. Real quickly, what it's all about is it not only shows different kinds of tasks that legitimate dogs can provide, uh, but it also takes a gentle poke at a real problem we'll talk about in a little bit, and that's the fake service dog yeah. issue. Yeah. So we try to uh, accomplish it, and we think Kinetic hit it on the head. Okay. So this is a 30-second uh, PSA. Yeah, here we go. He gets to go in. He's a service dog. Well, I could get a vest too. You're not even a service dog. He's trained to assist his owner. Well, I can do whatever he can do. Wow, did he just open the door? Yep. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that either. He's trained for over two years to become a service dog. Man, I wish I could be a service dog. Uh, <laughs> not all heroes wear capes. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah, they are our best friend. Going Ken back Kennedy tens Kennedy. of thousands of years. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So let, let's meet uh, uh, Larry. Larry, how did you get involved with service dogs? Well, I, I had uh, previously had pets, had Newfoundlands. And uh, my 175-pound dog was uh, great for doing the therapy thing, visiting hospitals and wow. schools and yeah. things. So I contacted Susan to get my dog uh, registered as a therapy dog so I could get the insurance for him, all that kind of stuff. That was uh, quite a few years ago, and then I think about 2010. And uh, so my, my uh, Newfoundland beginning to have, began to have spinal problems, and I was going to lose him to those spine problems. And just about the time I'm losing him, mine started. So I don't know. Your spinal a, problems. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if it's a hereditary thing I got from my dog, <laughs> but uh, was was at a real low spot. He's just lost uh, my best friend. Um, couldn't work anymore. Uh, couldn't do much of anything. Um, wondering how I'm going to pay rent. You know, survive in Hawaii, and um, small pension, Social Security. So things are real tight. Was at a real low spot, and and I just thought about Susan. Called her up one day, and I said, Susan. Um, do you think I would qualify for a dog? And she says, well, tell me about your problem. So we went over it, and she says, yes, definitely. So kind of started in the program. Uh, Buzz, was already, uh, Buzz was already being trained, and uh, I actually went out with uh, Buzz's brother for the first time. Because of my spine issues, I, can't, I, I, I need a dog that can provide me forward mobility, but I can't stand hard pulling. He's pulling away. Not, yes, yeah, so yeah, when yeah. I'm not ready for it. Yeah. So um, uh, his brother was just a little more hyper than, than what I could handle. Uh, a couple months later, I started training with Buzz. And what we would do is I'd, I'd go out once a week. I'd go down to the kennels uh, a couple times a week and take him for walks and things like that to get to know him and uh, think that I'm really training my dog. A couple funny instances, but uh, then um, uh, everything was going good at about, uh, I think Buzz was nine months old and it was about November, just about two years ago. And Susan said, would you like to be his puppy raiser? And that's, uh, that was the next step in the training. 
So uh, I said yes, and uh, Buzz came to live with me, and uh, we continued to train once a week. Did you have to pay he... anything to get uh, a service dog? No, I didn't. No. Okay. No. We do uh, not charge a set. Okay, I want to get yeah. that clear. So and and uh, so we just started training. It was about um, well, a, a, a kind of an unusual thing happened to me that uh, is a really big benefit to me, and I, and I attribute it to the veterans. Uh, I get my medical care through the VA. Uh, VA three or four years ago started a program for spinal patients. I think they might have branched out into some other things. I don't think they're going to do PTSD or any of the psychological things. Just my thoughts. And uh, But anyway, so the program was for spinal patients and I had to demonstrate to them that there's nothing else they could do to, to help me. A wheelchair, a cane, uh, none of those things are going to work for me. Uh, so they gave me an insurance policy. My dog is registered through the VA as a U.S. veteran service dog. They gave me an insurance policy through a company called Trupanion. It covers all my dog's veterinary care and prescription drugs for life. Right. Provided by the VA. Yes. Yes. Very they nice. pay for it. Yeah, and terrific. It's, 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 the yeah, biggest, it's the biggest thing, that, the biggest benefit that I've had since I've gotten out of the service. That's huge. I mean, it's everything. Yeah. I would, I would like uh, to introduce our audience to Buzz, your dog, who is here in the studio with us, but I'm going to make them wait. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be a cliffhanger, okay, a buzz hanger, as it, as it yeah, were. That's a buzz hanger. So we'll take a one-minute break, our customary one-minute break. We'll come back, and then you will introduce to us Buzz, okay. your service dog. I'd be proud to you. Okay. Aloha, Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Okay. We're back. We're live. Think Tech, Aloha United, we stand uh, with Jim Kennedy of uh, Hawaii Fido Service Dogs and Larry Bigelow, uh, who is a service dog owner and veteran. So we, we promised everybody that we would show them, introduce them to Buzz. Can you do that for us, Larry? I think so. Buzz, up. Come here. Okay, sit for me. Sit for me. Yeah, a good boy. So this is Buzz. Been together uh, a little over two years now. Uh, has become my absolute best friend. Uh, we're getting closer and closer every day. When I said that the training never ends, even, even that Buzz and I are together, we train every day. You know, and fine-tuning the things that he needs to do for me. Yeah. Uh, the biggest one for me is forward mobility. Yeah. But uh, he does all the retrieving things. Would you like to see him pick something up for you? Yes, me? I would. He's not going to do it until you tell him. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bring it to me. Bring it. Put it in my hand. In my hand. Good job. Okay, sit. And it's, of course, it's always about bribery. <laughs> Go for it. He gets Who's three more than he works. <laughs> What's in your pocket there? <laughs> and he knows which pocket, <laughs> believe me. Wonderful, but, yeah. wonderful. So that's wonderful, my boy. Wonderful dog. Look how devoted he is to Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a, one of the things that we do is we have a look command. And it's very important if he gets... Um, uh, starts looking at cats or something, you know, he's a dog, you know, and, and a lot of times he has to be brought back into what he's doing. Yeah. So we have a look command, but if you watch this, Buzz, look. Uh, hey, look. Good job. So Good look. important. Yeah. It really is very important. He, uh, and he's so uh, attentive to me. Uh, uh, my back is pretty bad, and a lot of times in the evenings I have a tough time sleeping at night. Yeah. Roll around, you yeah, know, and you're yeah. all around and grown a little bit. Yeah. 
And uh, he usually sleeps in the living room. He has a little uh, uh, pillow out there. But if he hears me in the middle of the night or if I get up to use the restroom or something, uh, Buzz is right there by my Comes side. Comes to check up on yeah, you. Yeah. 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 He, uh, if, I, if I go anywhere, he's right by my side. Yeah. So a wonderful experience. It is. It is. It's, it's uh, so much different. Okay, uh, come sit for me. Okay, Dan. Good job. Okay, what an what an introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> sure, you're welcome. So, uh, Jim, you know, we talked before the show about uh, about fake uh, service dogs and about imperson impersonation of circus dogs. It's not that simple. In in the case of Larry, a totally legitimate, necessary, appropriate trained you know it's part of the world that we customarily think of for service dogs but there's a lot of impersonation going on you know and i think they're not only is it some of it done intentionally but i think some people think that their dog because it gives them comfort emotional support uh, that they they think in terms of this my dog's a service dog uh, the unfortunate thing is is whether they feel that way or they're just going to try to game the system they can go online right now and search uh, service dog vests, cert certifications, and for sixty nine ninety five, you can get that thing. Is that right? Yeah, oh, and you'll get terrible. doctor statements, and if you spend twenty dollars more, they'll rush it to you in two days. You can order vests, you can they, order they uh, leashes, you can order harnesses, <clears throat> and what that has done is, is people have really taken unfair advantage of that, and it creates some serious problems in the real world. And for example. Uh, when an individual who has a legitimate service dog walks into a restaurant, uh, increasingly restauranteurs uh, uh, are well, looking at it, 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 well, they have to allow a service dog in, but they look at this little Fifi, you know, dragging his tags on the are floor. Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and it's yipping, and you know, um, if, if it's a legitimate dog and they don't let it in, they're afraid they, there might be some financial liabilities. Yeah. Uh, if they really question it, then they're, they they um, have to be careful in how they do that. And what happens is the legitimate service dog teams, even if they're really well behaved and look like it, uh, sometimes they get, catch this, the brunt of this frustration of, is that really a service dog? You know. And so it, it it depreciates the whole program when that it, happens. It really does. There are two questions that an establishment can ask. Is that dog um, required because of a disability? You can't say, are you disabled? You can't say, what is your disability? Mm -hmm. But is that dog required because of a disability? And the other question is, is what specific tasks has that dog been trained to perform? Mm -hmm. You can't say, give me a demo, give me an ID, you know, prove it. They can only ask those two questions. But people can, you know, what's the word, lie? When oh, they absolutely. are asked questions like that, yeah, they, they get can. away with it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the, the big the big challenge is is how, how do you how do you get people sensitive to what the, what they're doing? Yeah. And we think the more we get out and tell the story about the downside of this fake service dog issue, that it, some of the abusers might start to rethink it, or their family and friends will and say, "Hey, mom, dad, it's really unfair. You know, please, yeah, it's really unfair. Would you please rethink this? Yeah. It, it's serious." Larry, have you ever been challenged? Did anybody ever ask you, "Is this really a service dog?" Uh, uh, not really. Uh, some some people approached me at Foodland one day and asked me the two questions, and they see me in there all the time, and I think she knew, but. I think that's how they're told okay. to react. Yeah, good for them. So, so uh, uh, yes, and and when any, anybody does, I I, I want to be challenged. I want to be asked. I'm sure. really that proud. Means of, everybody is being challenged. Uh, well, okay. I, uh, I'm just really proud of what I've done, and it's such a big deal. My dog is is such an asset to me. You know, I just want everybody to know. Yeah, he's a service dog, and he's a real deal, and we're a team. Yeah, great. So the problems I have are, are the, and there's so many emotional support now. Now, I, 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 uh, three, three uh, times that it's real important to me. Walking up a slight incline, uh -huh. Buzz is given a command just to pull me gently, okay? We come to stairs, and I have to rearrange his leash, so he's pulling with his chest, uh -huh. but he'll actually pull me up the stairs. Oh, so, and that's it's real important. I have a, a tough time on sure. stairs. Uh, the only exercise I can really do is to swim. And so Buzz has been trained to swim with me. It comes in the water. Right, yeah, comes with in this the water. A great with story. Me. And then when we get out of the water, I have trouble in the soft sand, the water in the soft sand. So he has a swimming harness on it, so I'm pulling from his shoulders. And I just lean back and tell him to pull hard, and he'll pull me all the way up out of the water in the soft sand. 
So and, and these are just things that would be so hard for me to do alone. Yeah. Problem arises when there's so many emotional support dogs out there, people with fake service dogs, that they don't mind if you pet their dog and, and uh, you know, their dogs are always real friendly and everything. Well, the problem I have is, is say I'm working with my dog going upstairs. We both have to concentrate. I'm concentrating on keeping my foot, feet going up the stairs and, and he's concentrating on pulling me. And I've had people come up right in the middle of this and say, oh, can I pet your dog? Oh my God. And so, so like I, I did with you, I asked people to come up and, and look me in the eye and talk to me for a moment. The story is that I, when I came into the studio to meet these guys, I, I love dogs, you yeah. know, and I, and I began talking to Buzz. I, I didn't know his name, so I called him Baby. And I said, hello, baby. And Larry, Larry corrected me. Said, Not a good idea. You have to come through me because I control his focus. Yeah. And, I, you know, that's a very important point for people to understand. If it's a legitimate service dog, you don't go over to the service dog and start making nice and petting the dog or addressing the dog. You go to the owner first. Yes. Very, very important. important. Point. Very yeah, important. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about the law. Yes, uh, we spoke earlier, and I understand that this is recognized in a number of, you know, of, uh, federal packages anyway, uh, which, re which, you know, respect and, um, and give credence to service dogs. What are those packages? The, the, the number one law is the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA. Um, that law is the one that basically says if it's a service dog, and it has to be for someone with disabilities and specifically trained to perform tasks for that. If it's a service dog, that that dog is allowed anywhere the public is allowed in the United States. It's period, it allows it. They go further and say, though, you do not have to get that dog from a uh, certified training organization. You are actually allowed to train a service dog yourself. That's part of the problem with the fake service dog. Yeah, issues. sure. Yeah. Uh, so that, but the ADA is the governing entity there. Uh, if people really want to dig into it, the Department of Justice, if you go to the DOJ's site, has a great Q&A, FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions, uh, about eight-page documents, it really goes into a great deal. Uh, the airlines themselves have another uh, act that uh, goes a step further, and it actually makes room for certain emotional support dogs to be on board a plane besides a service dog. ADA doesn't allow for anything but a service dog, but the Airlines Act has allowance for um, uh, a, a comfort dog that makes you less anxious if you're flying. So this is beyond this, the strict definition that, of service that's dog. That's right. And then you but have if they to, want to do that, fine. Yeah, yeah but, but and they have to have doctor's certificates, and you wonder how many of those are legitimate. Yeah. And then you have the Fair Housing Act. What, which, what does that well, say? And what, that, what that says is that um, if you have an emotional support dog uh, and you have the papers that, that from your doctor saying you need to have this dog, then the, wherever you're living has to be able to accommodate you. That doesn't mean that that dog has free run, can go out and run around in the grounds, can run up and down the hallway. It's in and out of your unit and, you know, uh, and under control at all times. Um, so that's not, that goes beyond a service dog as well. So you've got these different acts out there and that uh, they're, they're good for what they're trying to accomplish, uh, but it goes beyond the service dog frame that we're yeah. used to working well, let me, with. Let me, uh, we're running out of time. Okay. I want to cover one other area. You know, is, it, is this, from a statutory point of view or a legal point of view, is this at its best or can we improve it in some way? And if so, how? Uh, I, I would like to see, um, certifications being required. Not that you have to necessarily go to a, a certified school, but if you do your training yourself, uh, you take the equivalent of a, a, you know, a general exam and, and, and prove that I, this dog performs tasks. If you get certification, then you have something that, is, that can't be trumped unless somebody is really printing false certificates. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's nothing that uh, that prohibits somebody from training their own dog and saying it's a certified dog. So I'd like to see certification. Certificate. National. It, national. It, it, because uh, you, states can't trump federal. Federal trumps everything. Uh, not to do a play on words here. But, okay. <laughs> I did notice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, the, the biggest challenge with that is that 
how do you how do you implement that? The, the bureaucracies that would be involved and the paperwork. Who makes the decision? And who makes the decision? And, and the that, costs. A couple of the things that are going on is is a person can't ask and and a, a buzz has been through. I like to say compliant because he's not certified. You know. He has been, he's compliant with ADI standards. That's Assistance Dogs International. They're the big licensing agency. The reason I wanted to bring it up is because if someone had planned to do the VA thing and try and get the medical benefits for their dog, it has to be ADI certified. It's the only thing they're going to recognize. And our program has been ADI certified for about two and a half, three years, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. But there's no overarching certification. That's, no, that is correct. Overall. Okay, well, let me ask one other question, and this is, um, you know, what I would what I would worry about if I were in your shoes, Larry. Uh, so, uh, Buzz is what three, four years old now. Yeah, he's going to be coming up on three. Coming up on three yeah. with the training and the time yeah. he spent with yeah. you. Right? And Buzz's um, life expectancy is going to be what ten or twelve max. I'm thinking so. Yeah. 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 So, what happens then? You know, I don't even think about it. Uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, my condition's uh, not going to get any better. You know, it's degenerative, so I'm not going to get any better. Um, and so I'm, I'm really glad to have Buzz now because uh, we have an opportunity to learn and grow together as my condition changes. His requirements are going to be different. So that's where the never changing comes in. If I'm to lose him, you know, that's the most horrible thing in a dog guy's life. I never had children, so dogs have been my whole life. Um, and that's just the hardest thing there is. Uh, I've done it with many pets. Uh, now with a service dog, you know, I, I worry about, uh, I worry about more about me than I do him. And one of the things that's so great about being involved with Hi Fido, if something happens to me, uh, they will come get my dog and they will care for him. And I know my dog will oh, always be taken oh, care of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to take care of Larry, too. You when know. that time comes, we're going to be there <laughs> Susan, to help provide Susan, him his next service dog. Susan oh, told me, uh, Susan told me uh, uh, a few months ago, and we were talking about some different things. And she says, she looked at me, she says, Larry, you're part of the family. Yeah. And, and it's so, it gives me such a good I feeling. I get that. I think it's such a wonderful cause. Yeah. I think if we had some place to take all the homeless dogs and put them in one place, and then we can take all the veterans that need them and, and match everybody up, go. we'd be. You heard it here on yeah. the there you It's go. very clear that this is not a, a two-partner partnership. It's a three-partner partnership. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank Jim, you. Appreciate Larry, it. great to have you on the show. Thank you.